Welcome to our In Focus discussion tonight on the increase in gun violence. Gun violence includes murder, suicide, mass shootings, accidental shootings, domestic violence, and more. In our state and across the country, law enforcement reports seeing a recent uptick in gun-related incidents. Tonight, we discuss what may be causing the increase and their proposals to bring those numbers down. Joining us first is Angel Valdez. She is the daughter of a fatal shooting victim. Angel, thank you so much for being here tonight. I know this is a difficult topic to talk about. At your mm -hmm. own comfort level, can you take us back to when you were just 18 months old and what happened to your mom? Of course. So I was, again, 18 months old. Um, my mom was 19 at the time. She had me very young. She, we were, we were great, happy family, you know. Um, she, on September 29th, 2001, she went to a going away party for a friend and that party ended up growing into something bigger than it was supposed to be. Um, uninvited guests showed up and they were asked to leave and they didn't like that very much. So um, in reaction to that, they turned around and started shooting and they should shot five people that night and my mom ended up being the only fatality. So yeah, that changed pretty much changed my life forever that night. I'm so sorry to hear about how that started off the first few years of your life. How has mm -hmm. gun violence impacted you and changed the course of your life? Um, well, first for starters, I've had to grow up without a mom, without um, the person that everybody needs. Um, I've had to learn about my mom through stories, pictures, and videos, which is not ideal. Um, and I've had to experience all of these life experience, college, graduation, my first softball game, everything without her something that nobody wants to imagine. Now, the person who killed your mother is up for parole soon. What are mm -hmm. your feelings about that? Um, I have pondered this question so many, put it in so much thought, and I have an unsure answer. However, I think my main question would be if he has remorse for what he did. He was young when it happened, so I'd like to know if he's learned from his mistake, because obviously that one choice changed his life forever too, not just mine or my family's. So I would just like to know what he has to say about it and if he's learned, if he has remorse, if he feels sorry, um, yeah, and he if he regrets it. Now we're seeing a recent uptick in the number of gun violence cases. What mm -hmm. do you think needs to be done to combat this concerning problem that we're seeing? I think that um, we need stronger restrictions for sure. However, I don't know what those restrictions mean yet because gun violence is such a touchy topic, especially now in the news and media. Um, I don't think anybody can give an honest answer to that until, or can understand gun, the gun control issue until you've been on my side of the story or anybody else's side of the story that has been affected by gun violence. Um, it's so, we're so used to it in the media today that we've become almost immune to it, seeing a new shooting every day, which is so, so sad and shouldn't be normal. I had to grow up learning about gun violence and I was 18 months old when it was affected by me and I had to grow up learning about it, which is something that no child should have to experience, no human should have to experience. So I think there needs to be um, a lot more education about the topic and people need to learn to understand and um, figure out what those restrictions can be without pushing or pulling. Angel, final words, what would you like to leave our viewers with tonight? Um, I would just like to say that gun violence affects people every single day. Um, something needs to change, and I'm not sure what that is yet, but something needs to change. And um, before you know, it happens to you or anybody else. It can happen in a second and your life can be affected. So I would just say, educate yourself and um, be careful and yeah. You've been hearing from Angel Valdez. She is the daughter of a fatal shooting victim. Angel, thank you so much for being here tonight and being a part of this difficult conversation with us. Thank you for having me. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us for our second In Focus discussion tonight on the increase in gun violence. Up next in our conversation live via Zoom is Nancy Halden, the Communications Director for the Gun Violence Prevention Center 
of Utah. And Nancy, welcome to the show. Let's start with data and statistics on gun violence. What do we know when it comes to the numbers? So um, gun violence is definitely rising in Utah. Uh, Utah's number one gun violence issue is suicide and access to a gun triples your risk of suicide. In the last 12 years, Utah's gun suicide rates have risen over 30%. Youth suicide rates have tripled. Um, among states with a high percentage of gun owners, Utah has historically had a low homicide rate, but in the last 10 years, gun homicides have increased 127% in Utah. Access to a gun doubles the risk of homicide. Over 40% of Utah's homicides are domestic violence related and easy access to a gun makes it five times more likely that domestic violence will be fatal. Like many gun owning states, Utah has an unacceptable number of unintentional shootings that needlessly take the lives of children Nearly all unintentional shootings of children occur in homes where guns are kept unsecured. Thank you for that data to put things in perspective for us. Now we're seeing a recent uptick in the number of gun violence cases. What are some reasons that you believe could be contributing to this increase? Yeah, we see two big reasons for the increase in gun violence in Utah over the last 10 to 15 years. Uh, first, more people are buying guns. And when you have more guns, you have more gun violence. Um, in the last two years, Utah has experienced a huge spike in gun sales related to the fear and uncertainty around civil unrest and around the pandemic. Um, we know that disruptions in employment, housing and other basic needs lead to volatility and easy access to guns has turned volatility into violence. Many of the people buying guns in the last two years are first time gun owners. They are inexperienced and untrained. For this reason, we're especially disappointed that the Utah legislature and Governor Cox chose to make Utah's permitting process and all the safety and suicide prevention training that goes with it optional. Most gun owners want better trained training, more safety conscious, gun owners. They want people to know what they're doing if they're going to own a gun. This is a step in the wrong direction that we believe will likely lead to more gun violence in the future. The second reason we see for the increase in gun violence is that the legislature under the direction of the gun lobby has been chipping away at our gun regulations here in Utah. In addition to permitless carry, they have encouraged easy access to guns by, um, by teenagers by, by reducing the concealed carry age from to 18 four years ago. They have bolstered stand your ground, which has been shown in other states to increase homicide rates. And they have turned a cold shoulder on laws that are shown to in other states to de decrease gun violence laws like closing the background check loopholes, passing risk protective orders, and being complacent about our very weak uh, safe storage laws here in Utah. In summary, we believe that weaker gun laws coupled with more guns and easier accessibility has led to an increase in gun violence in Utah. Nancy, in your opinion, what are some things that people in the community can do on an individual level to help combat gun violence? Yeah, uh, first of all, if you're a gun owner, lock your gun up, uh, preferably in a gun safe. If someone in your home is depressed or is going through a difficult time, store your gun elsewhere. Keep your family safe. Um, second, educate yourself on how your lawmakers are voting on gun-related gun bills. If you don't like how they're voting, let them know. Um, and if they don't listen, vote for someone else. Um, Last, <laughs> this is my, my PSA, my public service announcement. Um, you're really not safer with a gun in your home. A gun is much more likely to be used in a suicide, in a domestic violence assault, or unintentional shooting, or to be stolen and used in a violent crime than it is to be used to protect family and property. The presence of a gun creates more problems than it solves. 
Nancy, we have about 30 seconds left. Final words, what would you like to leave our viewers with tonight? I think I've, I think I've, that says it all. Thank you for having me. Thank you. You've been hearing from Nancy Halden, the Communications Director for the Gun Violence Prevention Center of Utah. Nancy, thanks for being here tonight and being a part of the discussion. Thanks for the invitation. We'll be right back. Welcome to our next In Focus discussion tonight on the increase in gun violence. Rounding out our conversation tonight live in studio is Representative Brian King of Salt Lake City and via Zoom, Representative Kara Birkeland of Morgan. Thank you both for your time and welcome back to you both to the show. I would like to start with you, Representative Birkeland. Where does Utah stand when it comes to gun violence legislation compared to the rest of the country? I think Utah is doing an excellent job of keeping up with the needs of our nation, particularly the needs of, of Utahns. There are uh, 17 other states that have permitless carry. So we're just one of 18 states that has understood the difference between being a gun owner and being able to cover your gun. It, it's, it's permitless carry doesn't mean that you are now a safer gun owner just by default or that, or that people can't own a gun. Uh, because they don't have their permanent this carry, their, their concealed carry. It simply means that they can cover up their gun. And so I think we made great strides and I think we're doing quite well compared to the rest of the nation. Representative King, let's hear from you. How do you think Utah stands compared to the rest of the country when it comes to gun violence legislation? Well, we can do a lot better. We've done some things in the past that have been good. We've uh, increased resources for those suffering from mental health issues. The fact is, uh, we've come to realize that the great majority of deaths that come from guns are suicides. And uh, I mean, it's like over 85%. So one of the things that we've done is allocated more resources to get individuals who are going through a crisis situation the help that they need. We've made it easier for them to uh, give up their guns uh, on a temporary basis if they feel like they're going through a crisis. We've allocated more resources for those folks. We've also done some good things in terms of uh, getting hands, uh, guns out of the hands of those who have been convicted of domestic violence. I think everybody would agree that there are some people that just shouldn't, based on their past history, be allowed to own guns, those who have committed violent crimes, those who have engaged in domestic violence. So we've done some good things, but we've also had some steps backward, unfortunately. I think uh, getting rid of the uh, concealed carry permit process which involved background checks and training was a step in the wrong direction. We did that in our last legislative session, and I think that's had a negative effect on our ability to hold down violence and death from guns. Representative King, could you give us a brief overview of some of your legislative efforts to combat gun violence in the state? Yeah, the, the last couple of years I've run uh, bills to expand background checks on individuals. Right now, uh, if you buy a gun from a federally uh, licensed firearm dealer, you're going to have a background check. But when you buy a gun online or when you buy a gun on a gun show, uh, there's no guarantee that you're going to have any background check at all performed. And uh, over 90 percent of the people in this country and in this state recognize the importance of that. They support background checks uh, being carried out in those kinds of situations, online sales and gun show sales. And yet we don't have that here. Uh, and I think that we'd move in the right direction if we, if we uh, got background checks in place. I also think uh, this is not a bill that I've run, but I, others are running child access protection bills so that we're making some effort to ensure that we have safe storage for guns and prevent children from getting access to them. Representative Birkeland, I'd like to hear from you. What are your thoughts on some of these efforts to pass some of these gun violence prevention bills? I think we're doing a great job, as Representative King said, when it comes to making sure that people who have mental illness are getting the help and resources they need. Something else that I'm proud of in our state is we have high schools that are now teaching uh, more gun safety programs than ever before. Some people don't like this effort, but I think it's, it's odd to me that we complain about people not getting trained, and yet we also complain that they're getting trained in high school. Um, we, we've got to be consistent there. And while, yes, people can buy guns online, a lot of online retailers are shutting down the opportunity for people to buy guns online, which is driving them actually more into um, buying them from friends, neighbors, or, you know, gun shows. So we have to be logical in how we approach this. Uh, you know, my husband works at a gun store. He manages one. People come in, they get their background check done. And it's, 
it's not a big deal whether you're going to a, a gun store to purchase your gun or you're going off of, you know, uh, you know, let's say a gun expo. It, people just are going to buy guns when they know that they can handle them. And criminals are going to get their hands on guns no matter what loopholes they have to go through to get the guns. Representative King and Representative Berkland hold that thought. We have to take a quick commercial break, but when we return, we'll resume our conversation on the increase in gun violence. Welcome to our final In Focus discussion tonight on the increase in gun violence. Before the break, we were joined by Representative Brian King of Salt Lake City and via Zoom, Representative Kara Berkland of Morgan. We pick up now right where we left off. Representative King, we'll start with you. What are some points of contention when it comes to the Utah debate on gun violence legislation? Why do these bills tend to struggle in Utah? Well, a lot of it is um, uh, a feeling that there is a we want to get government out of the lives of people and we don't want uh, state regulation uh, on such an important topic as gun ownership. We've got a high level of uh, gun owners in Utah. Uh, it's a western state. We have a lot of rural gun owners. We have a lot of hunters. We have a lot of recreational gun users. And so I think there's a concern about that. I, th I think though that one of the other things that is in play is that there is a very large and active lobby uh, supporting uh, gun owners and, and gun manufacturers specifically. The National Rifle Association is basically a lobby, lobbying organization for gun manufacturers. They want as many guns out there being sold in as many hands of individuals as they can get. And it's for self-interested financial purposes. Um, so there's that. Uh, I think that it's a, a real challenge among uh, our red state legislators to uh, be in favor of uh, the kind of uh, common sense regulations that I think should be in place when you have those lobbying interests behind you uh, opposing those things. Representative Berkland, let's hear from you. Why do you think this is such a contentious subject or um, legislation in this area is so hard to pass in Utah? I think one of the main factors is a lot of uh, misinformation, quite honestly. You know, we talk about this rise in gun violence. But we're not delving into the issue of, you know, because of COVID, we had a lot of early release um, for criminals charged with violent crimes in our state. What what effect does that have? When we talk about mental health, what, what's gone on with mental health this last year with COVID again? Have we given the right resources to that? We, we kind of missed the mark, frankly, as a state in delving deep into the real issues. You know, it's funny because of all the firearm laws, laws we have passed in the last couple of years, not one of them has actually made it easier for someone to own and possess a gun. It's just changed how they own or possess or, or what kind of training they are required to get if they want to conceal that gun. And so I think we really need to have more honest uh, conversations about gun laws and the benefits of them and why we have violence. Are these people who are, you know, are, are out on jail too soon? You know, there was a JRI audit that showed that we have a lot of inmates who were released too soon, perhaps, because they came out and they offended again. Is it, you know, what is causing a lot of this violence to begin with? There's a, there's a difference between death by suicide with a gun and the armed robbery that a lot of people think when they hear gun violence. Representative King, responsible gun owners and people who want restrictions on guns, they, both groups, they want people to be safe. How do we find middle ground legislatively? I think that we've got to rely on good information, good data, good facts. One of the things we did a few years ago that I was involved in is getting funding for a study of uh, how uh, people end up being injured and killed uh, with guns. And we realized, uh, and it was surprising, uh, that how high a percentage of gun deaths come from suicide. Well, that kind of data and information is going to drive good policy making. One of the things that we're realizing is how many gun deaths and injuries are caused by the unsecured use of guns that uh, people get access to, whether they're children or whether they're criminals. We need to do a much better job in Utah of making sure that we have secured, uh, the, the gun owners secure their guns and that there are consequences if they don't secure their guns, whether it's civil or criminal liability. But we need to make sure that there's accountability on the part of gun owners when they're irresponsible with how they use their guns and how they leave them unsecured. Representative Berkland, let's hear from you. How do we find middle ground legislatively? 
I would actually agree um, wholeheartedly with what Representative King just said. I think good data, good information is going to be key. I think all legislators want to make the best decision um, to keep people safe. And so we have to, again, go really deep into the conversation of what is the cause for the violence? What is happening in our state with our residents? Now, we're seeing a recent uptick in the number of gun violence in Utah and across the United States. Representative King, what do you think it's going to take to gain more support for gun violence preventative legislation in Utah? Well, that, I hate to say what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it. I think that it, it, it's going to have to have, uh, the impact is going to have to hit home on people. We had the tragic trolley square shooting several years ago. But in the light, in the wake of that, you had a lot more attention, a lot more feeling on the part of the legislators that maybe we do need to do some things in Utah. So part of it is it needs to, uh, I don't want this, of course, I don't wish it on anyone, but I think that the effect of having uh, people lost to gun violence and having them w wounded and injured is, is going to turn people's attention to this. I also think, again, that uh, uh, increased attention and awareness and focus on facts and data and how we can effectively decrease the number of uh, gun incidents is going to move us in the direction of uh, effectively addressing the issues that are most prominent in our state. Representative Berkland, let's hear from you. We've got about a minute left. I will let you close this segment. What do you think, um, to response to what Representative King said, what is it going to take to gain some more support for gun violence prevention legislation? Well, I think we need to start looking more into how we help people who have a mental illness and, and a desire to take their life. And, and I think that's going to be a big step. And that's going to reduce a lot of the gun violence that we're seeing here in our state. Because, you know, as was said earlier, it's about 80 percent of his death by suicide with a gun. So that to me seems like once we can really focus in on the cause of the violence, we can make better assessments as legislators on how to help people who are in need. You've been hearing from Representative Brian King of Salt Lake City and Representative Kara Berklin of Morgan. Both, thank you so much for being on the show, coming back and being a part of this crucial conversation with us. Thanks, Rosie. Thank you, Rosie. And don't forget, we'd love to hear from you about the show. We invite you to join our Facebook group by going to facebook.com slash group slash ABC4 in focus, or you can send us an email in focus at abc4.com. We'll be right back.